Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We are back with Motherboard Mondays. We had a few weeks off since we were away. We didn't have any boards to show you guys. And since the new boards are starting to trickle through now, we've got some freshness to share with you guys. And with that said, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week. So do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna check out ASRock's brand new monster, the Z390 Phantom Gaming 9 that supports the brand new ninth generation Intel desktop processors like the i9-9900K and the i7-9700K. Hashtag, not a review. Let's go. is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Level 20 GT 4 Tower Case. Featuring support for EATX motherboards, four tempered glass panels with a lockable hinge door, the latest I.O. port options including USB Type-C and USB 3.0, and support for basically any type of custom water cooling system you could ever possibly imagine. Find out more about the Level 20 GT at the link in the description. The ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming 9 has a lot of features and a lot of connectivity. So get comfortable. I've got a lot to show you guys. There's a lot to talk about. So let's check it out. What do we have here? It's the new ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming 9 motherboard. That's what it is. And that's what we're going to talk about. How cool is this little window thing that it's got? It's like a little flap and you can open it up and see the motherboard. But what we're going to do first like usual, is get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a look at all of the other little bitties that you get with the motherboard and we'll show the motherboard towards the end of this section. But this is the box that has all of the things that you need to use this motherboard. The first thing we've got here is the IO shield. This is a very nice change for ASRock. They've progressively been making much nicer IO shields and I'm a fan of it and I like it. All right, what do we got here? We have an SLI bridge for that old school type of SLI. None of that NVLink stuff. Let's keep it nice and old school. Next up, we've got all of the SATA cables you could possibly ever need, because like you're gonna find out soon, this motherboard has eight SATA ports. So you're gonna need all of the help you can get. Next up, we have the Wi-Fi antenna. Now this is quite different to the other ASRock Wi-Fi antennas, and I kind of like this design. I think it's got some type of magnetic thing on the back. I could be wrong. I, I'm probably not going to use this antenna, but yeah, it's there. Right, there's also M.2 screws, so you can screw in your M.2. Ha <laughs> I haven't used that one before. And uh, yeah, let's see what else is in this box. There is two halves, so yeah. Let's um, open it up and see what we've got. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a book with some writing on the front. It's the software setup guide that helps you set up the software for this motherboard, I'm guessing. Uh, I haven't looked at it, I haven't read it yet. Oh, let's have a look through here, see what we've got. Oh, there's a postcard. Okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do with this guy. This postcard, the first person that comments their address, I'll post this postcard to you. Um, actually don't post your <laughs> address in the comments, but if you do want it, send me your postal address in Discord in a DM and I'll post you this ASRock postcard, if that is something that you want. There's also this metallic frisbee looking object that contains all of the software that you need to get this motherboard running on your system, or well, rather when you build your system, but who actually has an optical driver? I'll be honest with you. Next up is the quick installation guide. Did you like that little transition? Pretty cool, right? And this will basically show you how to connect everything when you decide to build your system, like front panel and all of the other things that you do when you build Computers, I don't know. Ooh, let's take a look at the board. Now here is your front panel audio connector, addressable RGB, two analog RGB headers as well, some PWM fan goodness, as well as a USB 2.0 header, and your front panel connectors for your front panel and also another PWM connector. There is a diagnostic LED screen as well as a power and reset button if you're doing some kind of bench overclocking. Right, what else have we got here? We've got our 8 SATA that we mentioned previously. We have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header for all of that beautiful fast 
front panelness, a USB 3.0 headers, and quite obviously the 24 pin power connector so you can power your motherboard. Next up we've got some more PWM for AIOs and fans and pumps and all of that jazz on the top of the board and an 8 pin CPU power connector and an additional 4 pin for all of that 9th gen power sucking and power draw goodness. There is a standard 1151 gen 2 socket that fits 8th and 9th generation CPUs only as well as standard cool mounting that you'll find on most of these boards from the past 8 or 9 years. There's also additional PWM for all of your other types of system fans as well as two M.2 slots. These are Ultra M.2, they're NVMe only and they won't work with SATA drives. There is an additional one underneath this heat spreader that will work with SATA M.2s as well and yeah, let me just pull this cover off so you guys can take a closer look and here we are, we have an additional M.2 slot and that's a 2280 length, not anything bigger. You have four DDR4 RAM slots and yes, before you ask this question, it does support RGB RAM. I actually get that question quite a bit. And here is the really beefy VRM cooling. Now this board features a 12 phase VRM according to the documentation. Don't shoot me, I haven't tested it or pulled it apart yet. Next up I wanted to talk about the PCIe slots. You can use SLI in eight times on the top two slots. You've got a four time slot. And here's something that I noticed when I took a close look at the board. These one time slots have open ends. So you can actually put longer cards into these slots. Not too bad. Lastly is the IO on the back. You've got your CMOS reset, your Wi-Fi, PS2 and USB 2.0 for your keyboards, display port and HDMI. You've got the new 2.5 gigabit ethernet as well as lots of USB 3.0. You've got USB 3.1 gen 2 at the bottom as well as optical audio. This board, as far as Z390 boards go, sits somewhere around the higher tiered boards, both performance and price wise. This board isn't cheap, I'm telling you that now. It goes for around 280 US Freedom Credits or 380 Aussie Dollar Redus. Even though the price is higher than most of the other Z390 boards, you get quite a lot for your money. And with that in mind, we have a pretty insane build coming later in the week with this motherboard. So trust me, you're gonna to wanna to be subscribed to see what we've got planned. If you're interested in grabbing one of these boards, there's a link in the description. Like I mentioned, they're going for around about 280 US freedom credits. And there is an Amazon link where you can check that out for yourself. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. And obviously tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. Yeah, Monday, Motherboard Mondays. We back. That's awkward. I don't have glasses today. Maybe, I wonder if this, I mean, I mean, that's close enough to a pair of glasses, right? That kind of fits on my head.